Within this video, we're going to walk through using some of the modeling mode tools to create the shapes that you see on screen. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the shapes that you can find up here, some of the poly modeling tools, specifically the Boolean, some of the deformation tools, and then if you need to, actually playing with some of the pivots. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start creating these shapes. To begin this, we're actually going to need to change modes, and you'll find that up here in the top left-hand corner, we've actually got our select mode going, so let's go ahead and just click on that, and we're going to change this over to our modeling mode. You can also hit Shift-5. So inside of here, we have a bunch of options over here on the left-hand side, and to simplify things, I'm going to go ahead and just close a few that we're not going to be using. Next, what I want to do is actually set up where these are going to be saved, because as I build these models, they're just going to populate wherever they kind of want to inside of the content drawer. So to deal with that, down here at the very bottom of this, you'll see it says current folder. If yours does not, it may be one of these other two options. I'm going to leave it at current folder. And what I'm going to do is create a folder where these are going to be saved. So let's open up the content drawer. And inside of my content, I do actually have a static meshes folder. So let's go ahead and add one in here. I'm going to go ahead and add in a new folder and call this one engine models. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this one. And now this is my current folder where these are going to be saved. Now for this first demonstration, let's go ahead and use the cone. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into a better place down here. So I'm a little bit closer to the ground. Up here in the top left hand corner, we're going to go ahead and choose the cone. So I'm going to click on that. And now as I drag my cursor over here, you see I get a little cone in the world. Now, here's a pro tip for those of you that are taking notes, I'm going to hold down alt and hit tab. And then I'm going to move my cursor so that it's not in front of the viewport. It's going to be over here inside of the UI. Now, when I let go, what this allows me to do is actually see what that cone is going to do as I start to mess with these little sliders, which is like super, super helpful, right? So I can change how many bits and pieces I want on each one of these, so on and so forth. We're not going to go through each one of these because I want to get to the part where we're actually bullying this. So once I've decided that this is exactly what I want, all I need to do is go ahead and just come over here, click once. Now I can come down here and say complete. So we'll go ahead and just click on that. And if we look down here in the content drawer, ta-da, now I actually have my little cone right here. So we can use this to actually start to make other very complex shapes. So we're going to use this cone to make a more complex half cone, I guess we can call it. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. So to do that, I'm going to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard. And I'm going to click and drag on the vertical axis here, and I'm going to make a duplicate of this object inside of the world, like so. And the reason I'm doing it this way is so that I know it's aligned directly above the one that I originally had. So I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom one, then hold shift and select the second one. And that will allow us to actually do a mesh bool over here inside of the poly model tools. So with those two selected in that order, I'm going to go ahead and click this. And now you can see that I've got a new gizmo over here. And if I move this around, you can actually see how this is going to be cut which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now, before we go ahead and accept this, we do want to check a couple of things over here on the far left hand side. If you selected these in the opposite order, you can actually change the orientation up here, which is kind of nice. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're doing a difference. We're not doing an intersection or a union. I'll let you play with those on your own free will. It's really cool. It's from down here below, what I want to do is check my output type. So it's from input. So these are the two pieces that I'm inputting into this. We're going to write to a new object in this case, and I can actually give it a name. I'm going to ignore that for now. And I do want to go ahead and delete the inputs from the actual level. So I'll just leave them as is. So I'm going to just say accept. So now if we look down here in the content drawer, you'll see that I have our little half cone named Boolean, and we have our cone. So cool. This is working really well. Let's take this to the next step and actually kind of hollow this out as well. And to hollow this out, I'm actually going to need that original cone. And this is why we created new ones. So go back into my content drawer and I'm going to just click and drag this cone out here. Now, what I want to do is use this cone to hollow out this cone. And to do that, I need to make sure that they're at the same exact location. Now, we could very easily use the align over here, but here's another really cool pro tip. I'm going to select this object, and over here on the right-hand side inside of my details, I'm going to copy the location. Very simply, I can just right-click in here and say copy, select this cone, and then in the location on this one, I can right-click and say paste. Now, they're like right on top of each other. They're pretty close. They're not exact, but... That works pretty well for what I need. So what I'm going to go ahead and do with this is I'm going to go ahead and scale this down. I'm going to make sure that in this case, this is locked. So my X, Y, and Z scale is going to be all perfect. And I can click and drag here and I can just kind of make this a little bit smaller. And you can see it's going down inside. So perfect. That's exactly what I'm actually looking for. Um, I might even push this down a little bit, but I can change this by actually making sure that A, this one is selected and then B, this one is selected. Let's go back up to our mesh bool. 
And check that out. And now I can actually use the center of this gizmo to scale it here too, and I can move it around. So this is going to allow me to, don't go too far there, you can put, punch all the way through, and now I can actually kind of cut this out. And again, I wanna make sure that this is a new object. Boolean is fine, I'm not too worried about it. And I'll go ahead and just say accept. So cool, now we have the shape. So we've gone from a simple cone, I'll move this one over, to a half cone, like so, and then we've got this one. Now there is something that is very simple that we want to change on this, and that is where the pivot point is. So let's change that first before we move on to actually playing with some of these other tools. And the reason that I want to do what I'm about to do is because I want the pivot point to be on the bottom of these objects, not in the middle. And this is important to me as a designer because if I pull one of these out, you'll notice that it's like halfway in the ground, right? Like I don't, I don't want that. Like I don't want it to be halfway in the ground. I always want it to sit on the ground. So all I have to do is actually select one of these objects and over here on the left-hand side, I just needed to use the pivot. Now we do have a whole video on this as well, but this is a real simple example. I'll go ahead and click pivot, go ahead and just choose bottom. And now it's gonna be at the bottom of this. I'll say accept. So again, I can just grab one of these, come over here and hit pivot, choose bottom, and then choose accept. And that fixes the issue. So now every time I drag one of these in, it'll always be at the bottom of the object. So that makes it real easy for me to design because I know where the pivot's gonna be at the bottom center of each one of these objects. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and create a teardrop shape by using the lattice. To create a teardrop shape, what we're gonna start with is an actual sphere. So you'll notice up here in the top left, we have our sphere. So we can just click on that and I'll go ahead and drag one into the world and click once and then just go ahead and say complete. So you'll notice in our content drawer, I now have a sphere, which is exactly what I want. So in this case, what I wanna do is use a lattice on this. And with this object selected, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the lattice option. You can find it in our deform. So click on that and you'll get kind of a grid around it. Uh, by default, it's a five by five by five, which is a lot of points to deal with. So I'm going to just knock this all the way down to two by two by two, like so. Now I need to individually click on each one of these little vertices. So I can just hold down the shift key to add to my selection so that all four of them are selected. Now, the very center of my gizmo, this little tiny black box, is what I'm gonna to use to actually scale this because I want it to scale in all directions. So I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag to my right. It gets bigger, but if I drag to the left, you can actually make it very small. So cool, now I have a very simple tear shape. So I can just hit accept, and if I go back to my content drawer, you'll notice that now I have a teardrop shape which is awesome. So there you have it. There's a couple ways to actually create some very specific and very complex shapes very, very quickly by using the modeling tool set here inside of the Unreal Engine. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up, go ahead and just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you when I can.